Hello, welcome to Fridays at 4 on twitch.tv slash DDOStream. I'm your community manager, Cordovan, on this hot day in New England. We're under that big ol' heat warning that we've been under all week, and we're supposed to have a thunderstorm about the time this show wraps up, so so that's fun. Uh, but we've got a pretty cool weekend ahead. We have some exciting things happening in the world of Dungeons & Dragons Online. Uh, and you know what? And uh, thank you very much, Voodoo Spice, for the raid. So today is going to be a little bit of news. Uh, then we'll be in game back on Sirlona. I'm still low level. Uh, this time I'm in the harbor, and we're going to do some Haba type questing. Next time I'll be a little bit higher level, then higher in level, and uh, pretty pretty soon, like I say, within a few weeks here for this wild mage, a ladrin sorcerer probably take a heroic autos just so they don't have to level up through everything and i've got a nice current character on stream but for a little while i need to get a little practice in on using a sorcerer which is a class i am not particularly familiar with and no is the answer to that nymphant i will not be doing reaper 10 i could pike and reaper 10 if you want to run it but uh that's that's about the extent of it Yes, I understand that I've got some freezing issues happening on my camera today, uh, particularly some poor quality video issues. Unfortunately, I don't know that there's anything I can really do about it. I mean, as far as I can tell, something keeps spiking my CPU, and that's what's causing it. And I suspect, if only because I've experienced this before, that it's because Windows is trying to totally not update something behind the scenes without telling me, but also doing that, so. We'll just have to roll with it this week and uh, see if it if I can fix it up for next week. Oh, it's freezing temperature-wise. It's 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, I'll take it. I want that. I want that instead of this. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, let's get to a little bit of news here. If I can do what I'm doing. What am I doing? I've got poor blooms. I've got poor blooms today on this stream. Good enough. <laughs> nice, Nymphin, nice. All right, uh, let's get to a little bit of news. Uh, the first thing I want to mention, if you were not here in the past week or so, we do have Myth Draenor now up for pre-purchase. You can find out more at ddo.com slash myth dash Draenor. I'm just going to put the screen up here real quick. You can find out more about our upcoming expansion that is set to release at the end of July over on ddo.com. You can pre-purchase it now to get the Eladrin, the Eladrin Chaos Mancer, play a wild mage, and more. Get your stuff early. And we are getting ready for our first content preview on Bullroarer. Depending on how things go in the coming days could impact this timetable, but the current plan is to have our first content preview for Magic of Myth Draenor next week on, did I say Bullroar? I'm at Lamania. Sorry, my brain is on the other game right now. Regardless, Lamania, potentially next week, first content preview for Myth Draenor. Uh, I, it's not going to be all the quests. I, I think something in the range of three or so quests, along with the latest status of other things that are happening in Myth Draenor, but that's probably the biggest news. And uh, that will be next week. The other bit of news, and this has a deadline. That's why I'm bringing this up again. You've been hearing me talk about Chonkfest 2024 with our Year of the Dragon gift of the Groundbound Green Dragon Mount. Well, 
You're running out of time. You have through Tuesday to get this thing for free by speaking to Zatharal of the Eberron Hall of Heroes. So if you're within the sound of my voice and you haven't done it, don't wait. Get this thing for free. All you have to do is go to the Eberron Hall of Heroes. Doesn't matter what level you are, you can just do it. And you've got through June 25th to pick this one up. We are, of course, getting ready for the next Year of the Dragon gift, and that'll be happening next week. That is the Dragon Hatchling Pet. Uh, we'll have an article up that'll include a screenshot of it on DDO.com next week. It's a creature companion, and it's a small dragon hatchling, about what you'd expect, I think. Uh, but it is our next free gift, and that's going to kick off next Wednesday when the Game World's reopen so make sure you pick up your groundbound green dragon mount through tuesday before we take the worlds down next wednesday and then uh come back and pick up that free creature companion after that on wednesday i do want to mention that our vip loyalty reward program is also underway we're getting ready this is a, a few weeks yet but on july 1st we're going to uh, have our next VIP loyalty reward gift kick off. That is that VIP bag of many things. So up to this point, you've had additional shared account storage or a bonus 500 DDO points if you started right when we kicked this off on May 1st. So on July 1st, you're going to have your first opportunity to check out this VIP bag of many things that'll give you one of the following items that you'll be able to select. A raid bypass timer, an ethereal rest shrine that lets you basically place a rest shrine for yourself in the in any quest you're in a flawless sybaris dragon shard sentient xp gem glamour dust times 50 mirror of glamouring 2500 omni spell dust or a legendary raid bypass timer and that's going to kick off on july 1st so uh, for those of you who have been cooking along in the VIP loyalty reward program. That's what you can look forward to. If you're not on board yet, you can get on board and then it'll be a, a few months before you'll be able to pick it up. But you can find out more about the VIP loyalty reward program on DDO.com. You'll get five bonus shared account storage slots as soon as you sign up. And then once the first of the next month rolls over, you'll be able to pick up that bonus 500 DDO points. Then the first of the next month, the VIP bag of many things. Month after that, bonus character slot. Month after that, 10% item durability ward. So on and so forth. And you can find the full list over on DDO.com. We do have our summer sales happening as well. So if you have not taken advantage of that, this may be a week to do it. We have 30% off plus eight stat tomes, 50% off select hirelings, select cosmetics, 75% off select companion gear. That's things like the collars and, and hats and such for your creature companions. And that is through June 27th. We also have our monster madness sale of 25% going on as well. And that does give you select monster manuals. Our bonus for the weekend is Double Daily Dice XP, so you'll get that through Sunday, June 23rd. And then the final thing before I get to any of your questions and then get in-game. Actually, I think I do have a couple bits after that, but uh, this week in official news, we did release update 68.0.1 on Thursday. It, uh, it was a little bit of a late release. Normally we try to do these things on Wednesdays, but this time around it ended up being Thursday morning. The main thing we did was roll back our open AL update, and that has fixed an issue where voice chat wasn't working inside of the game. Also, we fixed an issue with the Wild Mage Sorcerer archetype past life persisting properly through multiple reincarnations. What was happening is you would get it the first time you reincar underwent a reincarnation, but then subsequent reincarnations it would fall off. So for example, if you did a epic reincarnation, picked it up and then did a true reincarnation, uh, you could run into that. Or most likely, the thing we saw a little bit more was people earning more than one past life and uh, then having it fall off from their character sheet. If that's you, you need to get in touch with customer support. They can work with you to get that past life feat reinstated. And as of Thursday's patch, it's a non-issue for everyone else. So if you undergo a reincarnation, the Wild Mage Sorcerer archetype past life will, will just be there. 
We also fixed an issue this week with riding the storm out. Uh, there was an issue with the memory puzzle not working. I had a question about whether that impacts other quest specific puzzles. My belief is yes, but if you do run into an issue with it, uh, let us know and we can play whack-a-mole on that one if we need to. We also fixed probably the, the second best bug I've heard of in DDO. Maybe there are others if I thought more about it. But we fixed an issue where Salimus over in the grotto, the tutorial issue in Snowy Side Corthos, during the tutorial, if wild magic surges happened that spawned a squirrel, Salimus would attack the squirrel and then break a Salimus's scripting for the rest of the tutorial. So you could sit there before you got the, the don't kill me buff. Next thing you know, she's off chasing a squirrel trying to attack it and uh, the tutorial breaks. Oops, that's a problem. I wish I had video though, I don't. We also fixed a typo on the Wild Strike tooltip uh, along with the Racial Tome tooltip and we fixed an issue where in the Eladrin Chaos Mancer Iconic Hero Enhancement Tree Core, you were not getting the proper choice of stats to get your benefit to. It's now Wisdom, Intelligence, and Charisma, rather than Dexterity, Intelligence, and Charisma. So that's the news of the week there, but there are a couple of player events I did want to call out. The first one is that I just saw a thing being done by a couple of streamers. Uh, and others. The unofficial Hardcore Summer League of 2024. This one uh, just got put up on the forums uh, today where Cozy Bean and some others are organizing a 30-day unofficial Hardcore League that'll be happening on Wayfinder from July 1st through the 30th, uh, just ahead of Myth Drenor. And uh, they're, they're still working out some of the details, but kind of think a self-imposed Hardcore permadeath thing. And they'll be doing a bunch of stuff that also I see Voodoo Spice is involved, same with Axel, Tavern Tales, Mary, Strim Tom, a uh, whole bunch of people. So, cool. You can find out more about that over on the forums. Uh, the last bit of, I guess you could almost call this uh, DDO Chronicle type stuff is I wanted to call this one out. This seemed pretty cool. I saw this on the forums today. Someone's put together a quest matic quest helper for newer players. It's it's basically uh, a dynamic spreadsheet where you can plug in things like what level you are, what difficulty you want to run, etc. And it'll give you some tips as to perhaps how to maximize your XP and, and give you some ideas of what you might want to look for, whether it's loot or XP or other things. So that was a pretty cool thing as well, and you can find a link to that over on the forums. Let me get to chat quick. I am going through chat right now. Will content creators get early access to the next Lamania as well? Not this time around. Uh, we will probably, I know we'll do more of these in the future, but this one will be a pretty regular Lamania where we debut some of the new quests. I'm sure we'll have one in the future, but I think that that content creator preview is likely to be the only one we're doing for Myth Drenor here. Please tell me the character creation options introduced with the Aladrin will eventually go to other races. Uh, if you are specifically talking about some of the hairstyles in that, I believe that that may end up staying with Aladrin and Aladrin Chaos Mancer since it is essentially lore based. But there are we always could potentially uh, introduce things like it in the future or find things that we could add to other uh, races as well. Oftentimes, though, it would involve making a different one for each thing, right? So it's not one hairstyle. It's one hairstyle per body type, per rig. So for, say, a Ladron, you, you would have at least two. And uh, it's often more than that even. 
I can't remember what we said on sentient XP for the gem. There's something on the forums uh, where we had stated that. What that sentient gem XP thing was going to be, but I can't remember now what it was. I have a number in my head that... Yeah, was it like 6,000? Something like that? I think it was about 6,000? I can't remember though now. I'd have to relook it up. Do we have any big deals for July 4th? We will have our final weekly summer sales event kickoff on the, I assume, the 4th through the 11th. And so, yeah, there should be some big deals there. Yes, uh, High Lord Pudding. We are aware that there is an animation issue with a crossbow equipped for Eladrins. That will be available. That will be fixed in our next game update. I don't have... Well, maybe I do. I think because of the holiday here and because of next week being a focus on our Myth Draenor preview, I think we're looking at something like July 10th for patch 68.1. I think that that's what it'll be. Basically be the Wednesday after July 4th holiday. And uh, currently we have a plan to do uh, a Labania preview that week as well. But I think next week we're really focusing on that Myth Draenor preview. And then we've got the July 4th holiday interrupting the week. So in terms of wanting to release a patch right before a long weekend, generally not a good idea unless you really have to. So I think it'll probably hold off until about July 10th for update 68, patch one. I don't have any news on when Crystal Cove will come back, sorry. Yes, 6,000 sentient XP. Thank you, Sardonic Fox, for looking up what I stated a while ago. Some games offer free character transfers to lower population servers. Do we think this is something DDO would ever offer? We could. I don't know that that would necessarily be the best solution. Uh, I think there's multiple things you can do there. You wouldn't... I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a large field full of landmines, but we, we could do something like that in the future, sure. Could also consolidate worlds if they really are that low population. Um, and you would have to ask yourself, why would people want to transfer to a lower population world? But, but I like Wayfinder, and that's one of our lower pop worlds. I played there actually quite a bit, so. All right, I think I have cut through the news. I would also mention DDO Cast is up and around. They've been doing episode 711 on Monday, so that's cool as well. And I've also seen some podcasts from, what, uh, Axel did one, and there was a third one as well that I saw. Uh, just just this past week. It's it's cool to see a bunch of podcasts back. All right, let me uh, head inside of the game here, and we'll do a little bit of questing. So I am in the harbor on my level two still character here, and so we're going to tear through some harbor quests and just sort of enjoy and learn a little bit more about playing my wild mage sork. I have seen the forum thread about people missing the hardcore world. I don't know whether we'll be doing a hardcore server next year or not. It's something we will almost certainly consider, but I, I really don't know. As people had uh, 
frequently brought up during the various hardcores that we've done, there was a lot of player concern about it impacting the not hardcore game worlds, you know. People who were like, oh, all my friends left to play hardcore, and I don't want to play hardcore, so now what do I do? And, uh, that's not the only reason why we took a pause on it for this year. Frankly, we had Year of the Dragon, uh, Myth Draenor, and, and just other priorities we needed to get done that precluded us from really doing uh, another hardcore season, particularly something like a tenth one, which you know, it might be a little arbitrary, but people tend to, to put a little prominence on the tenth of a thing, so we would probably want to do something there. That's a little special. And so we ended up... Uh, choosing not to do a hardcore world here in 2024. Whether we end up doing one, though, in 2025, we'll just have to see. Yes, I would expect to have a chat with uh, Severlin at the very least here soon. I've also had some plans to bring on Steel Star and such to talk a little bit more about Myth Draenor as we get closer to it. We were a little busy today, honestly, so... Uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about the other game, but we had Severlin on uh, on the Lotro side here at noon and had some pretty big announcements for that. In particular, we're doing a couple of uh, content gated legendary worlds on the Lotro side. And we're doing something pretty cool that I think might even be a little bit of interest on the DDO side. I don't know that we'll ever do something like this on the DDO side, but they're, they're going to be called these uh, uh, Veil of the Nine servers, you know, having to do with the ring race, the nine former people who were corrupted by Sauron and became ring race. And the idea is there are these legendary worlds, think a little bit like a separate server that unlocks content progressively over time. And what's going to be different about this one is twofold. One, there'll be in the larger open world landscapes that Lotra has, there'll be these wraiths, either lesser wraiths or the actual one of the nine ring race themselves, if you're at level cap, that'll show up. And it'll be a big battle that everyone's got to fight, uh, you know, potentially up to like 50 people in-game on the landscape, having to, to knock these suckers down. The other thing that's kind of cool about it is they've got some pretty big protections that can be bypassed if you are one of the 12 people at any given time on the server that has a Ring of Power. Well, I, mean, I don't think they're going to be a formal Ring of Power, but a Ring of Power-like ring. And yeah, so it's going to be an item that only appears in limited quantities on the game world at any given time. And once you've acquired one, you've got it for 10 days. And then it disappears and the next person can have it. But what it means is that if you are one of those folks who find one, that you're going to be pretty special for a little bit because you're going to hold the key to being able to strip off boss immunities and things like that on the game world. And part of the reason I'm talking about it here is it's cool. But also just because it's it's a neat idea that I would love to see us explore maybe on uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online at some point. There was a time years ago, years and years ago, about well, could we do a? If you think about the old, it's it's out of date now, but the old South Park Sword of Truth, right? Someone had the South Park Sword of Truth, and and it became a big deal. But well, what about the idea? There was a time where it was kicked around. It's like, well, what if we did something like that? Where there was literally just X amount of a certain named item in the game. And if you had that item, you were person especial for an X amount of time. And then at that, at that point, it was going to be, well, it would disintegrate and then it would respawn somewhere else in the world. But kind of the same idea of what I just discussed, where you would have the sort of ultimate truth on, say, Argonessen, but, and you might even be the only one to have it, but you'd only have it for X amount of time. It's kind of a neat idea, I've always felt, so. It ended up not really moving forward just due to a whole bunch of reasons, really. Um, it, it's, it can be as problematic as not problematic, but the idea of it's pretty cool. 
And I've, I've always wondered if maybe maybe we couldn't do something like that on the DDO side. So maybe, maybe, if something like that happens uh, to work out, maybe we can do do that here. Yeah, sort of the idea of a true artifact in DDO. Oh, what, what? How about I look where I'm going? Except I've got this thing over me. Hello, kobolds. Oh, there's my chest. Adventure so is calling us out. Exposing exposing us uh, for a, 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 a bug or is it question mark your question is is the red wizard's cosmetic cloak supposed to be white or red and the answer appears to be yes so they are the red wizard cloaks and the idea was i think at one point to make it red but then some wires got crossed and it went out white and some but most of the screenshots on the marketing campaign made it white and players uh, across discord of the forum said keep it white we like it white so we're keeping it as is and then we'll probably end up doing some kind of variant in the future uh, whether in Mythdren or elsewhere that'll be kind of a reddish version of the cloak but that that's sort of what the deal is with that is is yes <laughs> both and neither Schrodinger's cloak. I think most people have have given us that feedback that they they frankly really like it white. So, you know, it, we've done this in the past uh, where we maybe uh, I don't want to say messed up a cosmetic, but but released a cosmetic that was in a somewhat unusual color from what we said it was maybe going to be. And then people liked the old one better. And then when we changed it, all the people who wanted it changed got mad because, or didn't get mad, they were happy. But then all the people who liked it the way it was got mad because they wanted it the other color. And uh, so I think we've learned our lesson that let's just, if we, if we got it in our screenshots and people like it, maybe we should just don't mess with it. So I think that's ultimately where we landed on the, the cloak. Do I feel there will eventually be other cosmetic quivers? Yes. I don't know when. I've not heard of any actual plans for it. I have not seen any actual other quivers available. But I doubt that we're going to go through the process of getting this quiver and then make it be only once. It's just too cool to, to keep only for the one thing. So, Almost certainly we will see a different kind of thing in the future. Yeah, I would I would like to see bardic instruments as well. It seems like the kind of thing that would also make sense, whether it be a loot or whatever. drums yeah electric guitar we could make a mount that's like the guy riding the van and fury road rocking out on chains there You actually raise a very good point, though, uh, Druid's Fire, about sticking out a, at weird angles. When you get into things like quivers and mm, anything that doesn't look like a cloak, and with cloaks, too, but, you know, I'm talking about not cloaks here. 
clipping uh, and finding a, a happy medium between allowing a thing to exist and, you know, the reality of the fact that it is sitting on avatars of different body shape sizes and types and trying to make it work for as many as possible successfully it's always a little bit of a challenge actually and sometimes occasionally you have to say like well all right so maybe it goes clip a little bit but i guess it's okay and it's just a judgment call you have to make as an artist uh, as our artists do occasionally For features and abilities, Ice is a Rock says, that allow you to create ammunition like conjure bolts, why does it make a stack of used ammo as opposed to providing a returning bolt? The reason for that is a returning bolt is not in fact a returning bolt, but rather a singular thrown object that disappears and then is recreated through sort of a enhancement style system. You know that you There's some weird tech behind the scenes. It may look like a returning game. weapon, but it's actually a stack of weapons that refreshes itself periodically. So it does essentially work the same way. It just works a little differently. But I think it has to do with the fact that whether a spell can call a certain thing or not. Perhaps someone like Steel Star can provide a little more info on it. And give a better technical definition as to what's happening behind the scenes. But it's one of those weird quirks of, of the fact that this is not just a video game, but uh, a, a video game of a certain vintage as well. For example, traps don't exist. Did you know that? You traps don't exist in DDO. They look like traps, they act like traps, but there's no actual trap there, which is why hirelings struggle to be able to avoid them sometimes, because in terms of what they can see, there's nothing to avoid. Just one of those weird quirks of, of how game dev works. So in terms of a more technical explanation that's of higher quality, I really would just need to wait till someone like Steel Star was, or Torque was back on to talk about it. But that is my understanding, is largely returning weapons are stacks of consumables that reform themselves and refresh themselves infinitely. Uh, for next week's Lamania, will we see new loot and any new systems? I'm not sure about the system side of things, but yes, it, I also I would expect to see some new systems. In terms of loot, I think that'll be the preview after this one. So I don't think it'll be next week's preview, but rather the preview following that the loot list will be uh, getting its own preview. I would not be surprised if there weren't remnants of the loot system that could be visible next week, but it'll be in a not actually testable state yet. It 
It's true. It's it's kind of like boat pants from Lotro, where there are no boats, but there are pants that look like boats. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a, a it's a pretty fascinating subject actually a little bit about how some of the consumables work in the game especially returning weapons and things so it if we do get the chance uh for myth drenor here perhaps to bring a developer on might be a good question for it So, uh, Titan, any news on Lamania? That would be next week. We are expected to have our first content preview for Magic of Myth Draenor. Something in the range of three quests available to preview. Won't be a full preview of all the quests yet. This will be our, our first opportunity to see some of the, I think, kind of wilderness area and uh, a few of the quests. I'm not sure if we're going to have the full wilderness area as well or, or just pieces of it. But we'll have information in the Lamania release notes. Hello, Wolf Kobold. Nice to see you here. Uh, yes, the fact does state the number of quests and such in Myth Draenor, and look that up for you quick. Thirteen new quests, in addition to a wilderness area and raid content, which means at least one. I am assuming the answer is yes on the saga. Oh no. <laughs> Bad time to be helpless. That was a little hairy. Thank you, Byron. You're our hero. And no, I don't have a trapper. Have 
of the stolen All right. goods for Carter. I'm not going to worry about the chest. Send them to him right away. Can I speak to what will happen to the epic destiny trees when Myth Drenner goes live? For instance, XP per level, how many points will we be getting? Can we access a fourth tree, etc.? Um, I don't actually, I will need to actually interface with the systems team to get an answer to that question. I don't know off the top of my head what the answer is. I'm not sure what, if anything, is changing with the level cap increase. I mean, I guess you'll get a little more, right? Just kind of per usual. But I don't actually know what that means in terms of its impact in all the Epic Destiny trees. I would imagine we will find that out uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. Alright, so I can level up. Why don't I uh, do that real quick? New metaphor, you will be running all of Giant Hold and just eating the above XP loss. Why would you? I guess I'm not quite understanding why you would have an XP loss there. Are we still working to add the Gatekeeper's Grove to the airship teleporter? Or has that been dropped after it bugged? Uh, it hasn't been dropped, but it is a project that's going to take a little bit of time. And the reasoning for that is we need to... Uh, fundamentally change how the user interface element works. Uh, it's because it's not dynamic, so it has a fixed height that we finally got enough choices there that you couldn't include them all. So even though it technically was there, it was dropped off in terms of visibility. So we're going to have to put in a task with engineering to get a uh, dynamic uh, dynamic sizing for that and then we'll have to work with art to probably work on some elements for that and then we'll have to work with uh, systems if any further work is needed to actually hook up the selection choices and things like that so especially when it comes to multidisciplinary efforts like that it has to be scheduled and it has to fit into all the other things up to and including like say uh, working on lag uh, working on uh, the expansion there's a whole list of tasks that all these people have to have to sort through and uh, it can be a lot so I don't know what the time frame is on it but once that happens it probably will come back that could be soon I don't, I don't think I planned this out I don't know what I should take for my level three feet so I as you can tell, I, I tend to roll with it in terms of my builds. What do I want, though? Probably spell focus or greater spell. it either. You know what? I think I'm actually going to hold off. I want to think about this a little more. Figure out what I want to do. And I won't need it for this next quest. Yeah, it's either going to be the my first metamagic or perhaps that arcane past life or maybe maybe greater spellbound. I haven't decided yet. Probably one of those three.
Okay, I see what you're saying. I, I think I disagree with some of the... Well, I don't wouldn't say I disagree. I just roll differently, perhaps, than uh, some of the common wisdom that you'll see in the community related to losing XP. If a fat quest is fast enough, then it doesn't really matter if you're losing that 10-20%, because you can still get more XP by cooking through it at twice the speed than you would have if you were rolling it at level. That's just sort of the way I go with it. So like I'll, I'll run lower level quests and even if I'm losing, I, it's, sometimes I've even added like ones where I lose 40-60% because it's only to the base, it's fine. And by the time everything else gets done, you're still coming out ahead. Especially if it's a quest that you can kind of do in your sleep or, or not have to worry too much about. want more information on what sagas are done and which ones to collect. It would be a nice quality of life feature for sure. I don't really have that problem because when I'm done with the saga, I collect it. I don't hang on to saga completion like some people do. A long-standing quality of life asks to put Dimension Door Scrolls purchasable in one of the vendors someday. I don't see why we couldn't do it, but uh, people do have a tendency to use D-Door as a way to exploit quests, so I guess you'd have to ask yourself, outside of the quality of life benefit for those who want to memorize the spell, what, what really are you doing? when you do that like why what real benefit is it versus what harm it does you know Yes, I, I'm aware of the why on sagas. It's uh, it's certainly not a necessarily an intended feature, but it is one that by. that has existed it's for quite some time. Encounter several of so. them in the next room. You should right. proceed with caution.
I get, I get why people who want, uh, Dimension Door just being available. You'd like to pick up a stack of them to tear through quests and that. I guess I would say that I don't particularly go out of my way to get D-Door scrolls. And I actually have a fair number of them myself. I think I've probably got, at any given time, probably something like at least 20 or 30 of them sitting in a bank. I'm just picking them up from chests and things. So it's not, they're not that hard to get. But I suppose that just goes to the question then of, okay, I'll just well, put it by a vendor then. We uh, do this face step, like. It's nice to have a face step on this character. That'll be cool. Just to be on this extra safe side, since we're have just a few minutes here anyway. I'm gonna get my spell points back and rest everyone up before I tackle that last room. That's true, we even have it on the higher link there, don't we? Go, go. Thank you, Byron. I'm a little held up here, Byron. Can you take care of the problem for me? Thanks, buddy. It's true, face step getting, uh, making a dash available for any build after getting the past life is pretty crazy. You could see something similar being done for a similarly charged limited D-Door SLA, but maybe you only really need the one D-Door. That's a cool idea. I could see that as well. And also, yes, I, I think it's a very motivational reason perhaps to pick up uh, an Eladrin past life, is it not? All right, well, I think, I think that might uh, wrap up the show here. I'm gonna head on out before the storm hits and uh, thank you very much for joining me. 
This show is live every Friday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern over on twitch.tv slash ddostream. If you are watching over on YouTube, please hit that like button. Not only does it uh, let us know that you enjoy this content, but it also helps spread the word about the game over on the YouTubeosphere. If you subscribe, you get these videos in your subscription feed. Talk to you all again next week. Have fun.